there was a guy who dumped me. Yep. Hey, oh. Oh. my brother. Tell us about this, my woman. brother. Tell us. My brother. Yep. I've Tell been me. married for 19 years, right. but I was dumped. Well, a very, very warm welcome to the Gold Mine Show. We are absolutely excited just to bring this show to you. As always, as always, we look forward just to being that voice that reminds you that there is greatness on the inside of you. We want to be that voice that reminds you no matter how much in the dust you could be, you could rise up, dust up, and just keep on going. Because then we are keen about building a great gold mine community that believes in the greatness in the inside of every single one of us and indeed building a great, amazing community. Inviting you to follow us on the Gold Mine Show on Facebook instagram TikTok, and everywhere else man and let's keep spreading this word because we've got to build a great community at them and today i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited about our guest man i'm excited <laughs> we've gone beyond the borders my friend we landed all the way in johannesburg south africa just to bring you an amazingly beautiful soul man I had a chance just to interact with her just a bit man and if you talk about a gentle spirit you find it in there but a resolute farm individual you will also find it in one person man i have an amazing an amazing guest an author public health practitioner a mentor a communicator and everything in between man you will love this conversation i invite you to spread the word because we've got not timber cooler Amen. Man, she's in the house. She's in the house, <laughs> man. Listen, you make me sound better than I actually am. Let's start. Well, there. I want to let you know you're all of that and so much more, man. You make me sound so much better. And also, I think you're one of the very few people who've been able to pronounce my name correctly. I got it right? Yes, man. <laughs> yeah, man, man. I, I had to work Double on that. Double points for that. Double points for that. everybody wants to say November. Right. Right? Yeah. But you just got it right. Well, awesome. I'm glad I could, man. <laughs> Thank well, you. you know, South African names are interesting. Yes, they and, uh, are. And there's just a way to pronounce them. Yes, there is. And, uh, oh, yeah. glad that I could manage to pronounce yours. Yeah, man. no, you did a great job. Yeah? Yeah, double so stars for that one. Double stars. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting on a good foot. Well, Let's this is a good foot. This <laughs> And you know, names can be sensitive, man. <laughs> I, I want to be sure you pronounce my name you right. You know, I was asking you, should I call you Pastor Dennis? Should I call you Reverend Dennis? For now, let's just keep it at Dennis. <laughs> Because you want to get that right. You know, yeah, people yeah, must yeah. be comfortable Absolutely. with how you introduce them. Absolutely. So thank you for doing a great Most job. Most welcome. You make Most me welcome. sound, you know, more, much more professional, much more of everything. And I'll take it in. I won't fight right, you. Right. I'll take it in. Well, as I said, you're all of that <laughs> and more. Thank you. It's such a joy to be on no, the show. No, thank you so this much for such coming. such a wonderful show. Right. And I know that uh, you air it predominantly in Kenya, yep. perhaps the audience, but we are watching right. in South Africa. Africa. Right. We are watching right. Right. across the borders. Right. We are getting absolutely blessed and inspired. I've seen the guests that we have brought into the show. Yep. Yep. I've seen the hope that has come back right. into people's right. lives right. as a result right. of this. So this is absolutely phenomenal, no, thank man. You. Thank so you. Thank that you for that having me. Thank you, man. I'm so honored, man, that, that we could have. Tell you what, um, life happens to all of us. Yes, it does. Life happens to all of us. Yes, it does. And we stubbornly believe on this platform that yeah. there is greatness on the yeah. inside of every single one of us. That's awesome. And one scratch here and one bump there yeah. and a pothole on the other side must never become the reason Absolutely. why we stop believing in the greatness on Absolutely. the inside of Absolutely. every single one of us. And that's why we do this. This man. is powerful. That's exactly why we do this. this and and, and I keep saying, if only one soul is transformed, oh, yeah. man, the show served its oh, purpose. Oh, yeah. The show served you know, its purpose. I, I actually think that um, I must commend you. I must commend 
the rest of the team right. because we live in a very selfish society right when people get the idea that look i've made it mama i've made it yep. they're like i'm done yeah. <laughs> you know? i just want to sign the hour in, <laughs> in fact isn't it true that yep. when people succeed yep. and they come from you know they come from the villages they yep. come from very poor areas yep. the moment they succeed they are gone we even forget they, where we came from you know what i'm saying you have and no so interaction with your past in this day and age to find people like yourself mm. to find a whole team right. that is actually here to make sure that you pull yeah. someone as you rise yeah. if you ask me for a subtitle for your show Pull someone as you ah, rise. Ah, <laughs> and then the guy pulls his, still I rise. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's, it's our responsibility. Yep. And it is platforms like this yep. that really make it worthwhile, right. that remind us yep. that we didn't lift ourselves up. Mm. There were other people who exactly. lifted us, and exactly. therefore we have a responsibility exactly. to do the same. So thank you. Exactly. This is awesome. And you know, someone told me a candle never loses its own light just Absolutely. by lighting another this is true so we might light as many as we can this is true until there's enough light out there Absolutely. aren't we going to be a better community that of way of course we will Absolutely. and i think i think in fact that's the challenge that is upon all of us right because if you are successful alone yep just imagine a family situation in south africa we have a concept called black tax right which basically means if you are the only one who is successful you're going to pay tax for everybody else. <laughs> you are going to have to put your own things oh. aside. And take care of everyone else around you. So is it not for your own benefit to make sure that everybody else succeeds? Whoa. Because that way, the responsibility goes to each individual. Exactly. It becomes lighter on you. Absolutely. So I think shows like this, I think people like yourself who make this statement that says there is gold in everyone yep. and it's our responsibility to help to mine right. that gold. This right. is where it's at. Right. This right. is what all right. of us should right. be right. doing. By the way, I like <laughs> I like the conversation of the black tax. Uh-huh. I think it is it is burdensome to be the only successful guy around Absolutely. people who aren't making it. Absolutely. The Absolutely. burden on you is too heavy. It's true. It's, it's too true. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Yet I think it becomes a whole lot easier yeah. when you can build success all around you. Absolutely. And you're surrounded by guys you can share experiences Absolutely. of a sudden journey. Absolutely. I and Dennis, it's, yep. it's not just a concept within families. If you look at the most successful countries, mm. these are countries who have invested into the education particularly mm. of their young people. Right. And the countries that have provided free education mm. and free health care, mm. particularly for young people, mm. they are the most successful. Right. If you look at Asia as a continent mm. and how young people are educated mm. in skills, in mm. technology, mm. you will get a nation mm. that is prosperous, a nation that is a global leader. Right. Why? Because of this concept of saying, in order for the whole to be successful, we have got to make sure that we, we take the individuals and we build them up. That's the way that it works. And we invest in them. Absolutely. And we are not quitting on them. Invest. Until every single one of them rises. Amen. So we build a tide Amen. that raises all the boats that, have, that are on that particular Amen. And this is what we're here to do today. That's what right? we're here to do, man. We're going to have fun Let's with this. Let's do it. <laughs> My friend, man. It's, it's, Let's it's do beautiful. It. You know, like you said, maybe we have a lot of East African audience. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I'm starting to see European audiences yes, and all of that stuff. Yes, that's awesome. But I, I want us to go to South Africa. Let's do that. I want us to go to South Africa. Let's and I want us to that. go back to your growing up. Let's do that. And your journey. Today yeah. we call you an investor doing yeah. all the investments that you're doing. But yeah. I want us just to go back yeah. to the beautiful you. Yes. The young you. Yes. Back in South Africa. Yeah. And, and what that journey was mm. like for you. Mm. And, and, and I just want us to go back there. Let's do that. Yeah. I think that... I have been quite fortunate. It's always um, a good thing to start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. So currently I am, as you said, a public health practitioner. Right. Um, I told you earlier that I did three master's degrees. Story for another day. <laughs> Story one, for another two, day. And three. One, two, three. I mean, why not, oh, right? My <laughs> and currently doing a PhD and as I'm well. Doing a PhD. We are not even so stopping. Listen, we're not done. We're going eh? all the way. We are, not, we are mining the gold. That's what I we're doing. <laughs> well, that's how gold mines do women. So <laughs> right. I, I am all about tapping into 
every aspect of the potential that God has put in me. And I make absolutely no apology for going all the way and for exploiting every opportunity. We're leaving no stone unturned. No stone unturned. Every opportunity. And I actually think this is the difference between people who are successful and right. people who are not. Right. Because we might all be given the same opportunity, but right. the question is, yep. what will you do with it? Exactly. It's about what you do with what you are given. Right. I started off not from a, a very well-off you know, family. Mm -hmm. We were relatively stable. Mm. We stayed in a location called Mdanzane. Mm -hmm. Don't even try to pronounce it because you're going to butcher the... I I'll do that after the show. <laughs> no, just... <laughs> Just not. I'm do it after the just show. Say, no, okay, no. just yeah. say yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so born right. in a township um, of Danzane, which is predominantly where the black population... I should tell him, try to <laughs> say Danzane. Let's see whether we're going to get this right. Don't Let's try. Let's see we go there. You're right. doing well so far. Right. Trying, okay? trying, trying. So Six out of ten, not too bad. Right. We are in this township of Danzane, right. where most you know, of the black population within... Um, a town outside of a town called East London. It's right. the southeastern part of um, South Africa. It's right. a beautiful, beautiful province. Right. The province of the Eastern Cape. And I am proudly Corsa. Right. So I do the click thing. Say, say, say that click thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do the click thing. So, so, so that, so I that say what, what to... There you go. This man. is me, eh? <laughs> So this is me. Yep. I am just authentically Corsa South African to the core. Right. Right. Proud of my heritage, of my blackness, of my language, of there my culture, and the people from which I come. And those are just one of the things that I am most grateful for, that even though I've traveled the world, I studied at the University of London, right. my husband and I stayed in the UK for a couple of years, right. but I am closer to the core. There you go. I will give you the click in, in, in London. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Irrespective of where you're at, man, it's going to go. And I actually think it's a very important foundation. Even as we talk about, you know, the gold mine, we talk about people uh, being lifted from where they are. There is something you need to embrace yep. about who you are. And, and, and I want to pause there for a moment That's because true. It's, tell you what, man, mm. Apathide is an environment you grew around. Yes, it is. And I honestly believe it must have challenged many aspects yes that either speaking to identity or yes. speaking to self-worth or yeah. speaking to yeah. and for you and, and really i'll be interested just to hear your interaction with it yeah. but to find one that has gone through yeah. that challenge yeah and stands tall and says i yeah. am proud to be who absolutely. i am absolutely that statement absolutely. must be coming from overcoming many many absolutely. things absolutely i was you know in the conversation we were having earlier yep. i was saying i have a deep respect for the sacrifices of the people who have gone ahead of us I was raised by very strong women. I was raised, my grandmother was a domestic worker, possibly for almost all her life. Right. And so she would go into classically a white person's house, go and clean, take care of the children, and then come back home. And she did that in order to take her children to school. And one of those children was my own mother. Right. And so I think if I then get to a stage where I, I think that my identity is inferior. Is it not an insult to my grandmother? Is it not an insult to the people who sacrificed for me? Because they were just as black, they were just as women. So how do I go now into an environment where I distance and I dissociate myself from the very authenticity that birth to I am? But let me tell you my dear. It's my pride. Isn't that what we struggle with? Ah! And it's I'll tell pride. you for free, that struggle mm. is real. Yeah. Not only is it real, it is yeah. rampant. Yeah. Yeah. Black isn't as good. Yeah. Yeah. A background that talks about a domestic worker is not regarded highly. Yeah. Yeah. And just because I came from a lineage of that nature, then I feel like I'm not good enough. Yeah. And that struggle is real. And yeah. unfortunately, you'll be amazed at how much that becomes a mess to the foundation. Absolutely. Of very many lives. Absolutely. And I think it's the reason why people tend to lose themselves. So people will say, oh, you know, we used to know Notemba, but eh, since she moved to what, 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 since she now studied a PhD and now has got a title, since she got married, it looks like you lose yourself because 
you have not embraced who you are the depth of the culture the character the people who have sold into you and i think for me it's an absolute honor to go in any part of the world and be as Kosa and be as black and be as African because it is all of those things combined that have made me who I am, including my struggles, by the way, including the, the points in my journey that revealed my weaknesses. Mm. I remember when I met my husband and him and I have been married for 19 years, drum roll, da 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 da. No, you don't even look at I mean, From the time you said <laughs> that, I've been struggling. I'm looking for this age and I'm like, man, I, I don't Celebrate. seem to see you. It's been a 19 year journey and we are uh, celebrating our 20th uh, wedding anniversary next year. So when I met my husband, I told him, I said... Well, at some point you're going to tell us what it takes to be 20 in marriage. <laughs> when, <you know? laughs> so I told my husband, I said, I know you like the me that you see. Right. But the me that you see is a combination of struggles, of pain, of trauma, of self-doubt, of issues with identity. And so if you marry me, you marry all that I am. It's a cocktail. And I remember having so many conversations, you know, with him and telling him everything. Mm. And if there's any young woman watching, mm -hmm. I want to tell you that if a man cannot embrace the totality of who you are, he's not worth pursuing. Because people cannot cherry pick. Right. You can't want the side of the me that is... The good in you. No. Right. Because the good in me is also a product of... <laughs> Everything else. Do you want to say that one more time? I'm yeah, man, you're, you're, you're you. going to have to say that one more I'm time. I'm telling you, if a man does not embrace the parts of your character that are weak or that are not good, he is not worth pursuing. That are still work in progress. No. Right. No, right. we must. We, yeah. are, we are full and complete individuals. And I actually think that when we do that, we give other people the permission to also be authentic. Right. The reason why we complain about people who are fake, mm -hmm. people who give a certain impression on social media, mm. is because we don't give people the platform and the permission to say, I might be where I am, but where I am is a combination. Of a journey. It's a cocktail. It's been a journey. That's who are, we are cocktails. It's been, look, <laughs> but it, that statement can be even more difficult on a social media age. Yeah. Because on all that social media yeah. stage, man, all we want to project is the glam, the bliss. There's pressure. Got it going on together yeah. and, and it is see. I mean, social media is not for uh, elevating struggle. I mean, you of don't course. see it. We just see the finesse, the polish, the accomplished and all of it. That's what yeah. we see. It is true. It is true. And, and it's amazing when you say you're a sum total of a journey that has Absolutely. been made. Absolutely. And Absolutely. proud of your heritage and proud, proud of your grandma and proud of where you came from and Edison. Absolutely. It's not a statement we hear a lot, especially when you think mm. it's not a bright side of mm. where I came from. Mm. Mm. And mm. and part of our struggles start there. It it's a foundation true. of our struggles. It is true. And I think, you know, people like myself and you who are passionate about helping others rise is that we need to give people a point of reference. Yes. If you don't know my struggles, you have no point of reference from which you can speak to me. Because I can easily dismiss you. Like, what do you know about living this kind of life? What, what right do you have to tell me what to do or what not to do? Because you've never walked in my shoes. But when you give people a point of reference, you allow them to say, Oh my God, so you also went through what I went through? Then it means that there is something in you that I've got to learn. So I think it's important that in the in the context of the social media age, right. projecting you know these kind of successful personalities that we project, we do have to we have a responsibility to be authentic and to provide a point of reference from. And which that context is is everything. Absolutely. It is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. So your grandma then raises your mom. Yes. And uh, so you're about to go to your mom and yes. just growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I think that, you know, my mother showed such an incredible example of what a relay, you know, like a relay, the race right. or, or, or a marathon looks passing like. Passing on the baton. <clears throat> it's passing on the baton and you want the next person to take it further right and i think that's why even from an education point of view i don't apologize to anyone for having three master's degrees i mean i can do a fourth one if i want and we can throw in and currently pursuing a phd Amen. just in case you have a problem with the three masters <laughs> a phd is in the works <laughs> and the i hope reason... i'm gonna be told about the graduation <laughs> 
We'll invite you. I'm just throwing that in there. Man. We'll invite you to the right. graduation. Go ahead. Yep. And the reason is because it is important to honor the seeds that others have sowed. Right. And I think my mother was such an incredible example of how the seeds that my grandmother sowed bore fruit. Right. Because she went to university, right. she graduated, she became a teacher, and she became a professional in her own right. right. Something which my previous generations, you know, many of the great grandmothers or aunts or uncles mm. might not have had the privilege of. Mm. And so she literally became a door opener right. that enabled those of us who followed after her to look at her as an example of what is possible, even in the midst of difficulty and, you know, a life that was, I would say, poverty, mm. you know, mm. because it was very difficult. The people who grew up in Tanzania, the location mm. that I grew up in, will tell you mm. that we, at the time, we didn't even know we were poor, actually. <laughs> You're just poor, you don't even know you, you are. Because <laughs> we had a thing we used to drink, it's called Indubela. Right. Indubela is water with sugar. Right. That's it. It's right. sugar water. Right. And for us, it was so normal. Right. It was only when you got out of that environment that we were like, eh, <laughs> man, people are drinking juice. <laughs> There's better life out there. <laughs> Things are happening out there. <laughs> there. You can get orange juice now. Because as we thought, ah, you know, this is the life. We didn't know. And that's how incredible, I think, the parents who raised us were. You didn't even know. Right. You were so much shielded and sheltered right. from the difficulty of growing up right. that you didn't even know that you were actually poor. Right. And I think that because of that, we then have this responsibility, which I'm saying, I think my mother was such an incredible example. Right. She's an awesome, right. amazing right. woman, right. Um, right. probably the greatest inspiration for right. me. Right. And she went through quite a lot of difficulty, mm. but was resilient at every turn. Right. And so it is such a pride for me to be birthed of such great women, right, you know, who were right, able to do that. Right. So I think my mother really played such a, a, an important role for me. Uh, and you know, it, it also says, yes, I can be in the situation I'm in, mm -hmm. but I have a vision for a better day Amen. tomorrow. Amen, absolutely. Because I mean, when you think about your grandma, for example, mm -hmm. just, just doing all she had to take her daughter to school yeah. in an appetite situation, that yeah. yeah. was visionary. Yeah, also. yeah, absolutely, because I'm telling you, a uh, discrimination, uh, particularly along the lines of race in South Africa, whilst we are a democracy, but um, there are still very strong remnants of it. Um, it might be in legislation, in paper, we are a democracy, but if you go to black communities, you can still see mm. that the, the resources and the education, the opportunities, they are still along racial lines. Mm. And there are brave people in very difficult spaces who are pioneering mm. a spirit that says our responsibility is to move beyond paper. Right. What we want now is a radical transformation that is practical. It must come I to want, life. I, I want access. Right. That's what I want. I want access into things that generations before me did not have access mm. into. Mm. And so when we get given these opportunities, we do so understanding that people like my grandmother mm. didn't have that access. Right. And I think what we've got to be strong about is don't allow people to make you feel guilty for having access. Right. That's, right. What, that's what our grandmothers were fighting that's for. That's what they fought for. Because now you get access, people say, oh, you're making yourself better than us. Oh, you think you are now, you know, uh, rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous. Now you must feel guilty mm. for having the very same access mm. that your grandmothers and your grandfathers fought for you to have. Mm. No, mm. we're not going to feel, mm. you know, guilty or mm. apologetic mm. about it. That's what our grandmothers fought for. Mm. And I think for me... Even in, in terms of the levels at which I have pursued education mm. or business mm. or my career, mm. it's exactly for that. Mm. It is to say the, the tears that my grandmother cried, mm. they will never be in vain. Right. Wherever, right. if she ever wakes up, she must say, ah, this is what we were struggling for. We it was want well to worth see. it. Yeah. Right. Her, 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 right. her, her suffering and, and her difficulties were worth it because mm. I, as Notemba, I mm. need to be a return on her investment. Say that again, man. I, as an individual, I have a responsibility to be a return on the investment of the person who sold into my life. I have to be a return. You see, Notemba, mm. 
I guess this question of being guilty, yeah. of being successful, yes, is a mindset that we must deal with. We really need to. We must deal with it. I think it's a it. mindset we must just get rid of. We must deal with it. Because then ultimately the quest was always for better. Mm. The quest must have always been for higher. Mm, absolutely. And I've got to decide for myself yes, and do. work towards it. Yes. And when I begin to attain it, yes. it must not become a guilty point. It cannot be. How can it be? How can it be? Because you go to um, African countries, you go to black communities and societies. <clears throat> we have a lot of shacks in South Africa, you call them what here? Shanty towns, you call them... Um, slums? Slums, you slums, call yes. them slums. Right. We have a lot of those. There is no glory in a generation that remains in the same place that the generation prior fought for. There's, There's no glory. Return on investment there is absolutely there none. There is no glory. Right. There is no glory. Right. And therefore, right. when we see, which is why I love this show. Yep. I love this show because what you are essentially saying is that we are going to shine a spotlight. Oh, yes. On the generations that have progressed from where the previous generation yeah, was. Absolutely. Because we want to It's going to be progressive. Yeah. It's going to be progressive. Exactly. It's That's gonna be what progressive. we're about. And so... And, <laughs> You see, the time we've got to therefore ask this question, man. If where you are looks like where your parents were at, right, something is not firing correctly. It's wrong. Something is very wrong. And it must be the pride of parents to have seen you progress. Absolutely. And you've got to want it for yourself too. Absolutely. And it's a mindset issue. We've got to deal with it. And I think that that's essentially what holds us back. I have encountered people who have been given offers and they say, oh, that sounds too much. There must be corruption somewhere. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm like, if you don't want that money, bring give it, it on, on Bring it on, bring I'm it on. <laughs> People who say, ah, three cars. <laughs> how, how should I'm we like, manage it? Excuse me. Right. If I can have five and I have to have one for every day of the week. Yep. You've got the right So today I roll the in the red one, tomorrow I'm in the white I'm one, saying. and then the following day I'm happy to roll <laughs> in the pink one. <laughs> options. Yeah. We call them options it's a mindset yeah. a mindset that has an element of fear and the reason you are afraid of success the reason you are afraid of of anything that is associated with progress is that it is foreign to you right you have suffered so much right you are so accustomed to poverty right that when when you encounter real wealth there's something in you that rejects it because it is foreign i'm in healthcare. And the people in healthcare will tell you that that's what an immune system does. Mm -hmm. An immune system warns you when mm. there's a foreign object mm. and then it fights you. So if COVID comes into your body, mm. your immune system is immediately going to fight it right. because it is foreign to the body. Right. And so what we need to do as a society, as an African continent, is to recondition our minds. Success is our portion. Success is what God wants for us. There is no glory in slavery. There's no glory in apartheid or in poverty. Where we are going is forward mm. to make progress mm. so that the sacrifices mm. of our grandmothers mm. can be worth it. I want us to walk through the mindset, therefore. Mm. The welcomes progress. Yes. That yes. hugs the next stage. Yes. Yeah. That is receptive. Yeah to the next level. Yeah. And, and I really want you just to walk us through. Because yeah. I mean, uh, let's give it to you, man. You've done well. Yeah. <laughs> your lens, your goals. <laughs> what a grow up, I want to be Hashtag you. Man. Goals. <laughs> <laughs> what a be you, man. But I want us to speak to the mindset and how yeah. to cultivate one and how to nurture one and yeah. ADC. If you could just yeah. walk us through a bit of that journey. You know, I think when you recognize what success can do, you will never reject it. So in my growing up, I told you, uh, my mother set an example, and I saw in her what education could do. Right. Because she came from an environment where uh, there was a lot of financial dependence. Right. And what education did was that it gave her financial independence. There you go. So even when things didn't work in her life, because I told you that my parents got divorced. Right. Uh, my mother got married. Um, myself and my brother were born. And a couple of years later, my parents got divorced. Right. But because of the education 
because of the financial independence, right. because of the understanding of the opportunities that are available, mm. that did not mean it was the end. Right. Do you know how many women in this country and across the continent find themselves in positions where they feel they are without options? And so they stay in relationships that are destroying them because they feel they don't have options. They stay in relationships with people who abuse them because they are financially dependent. Right. They stay in small-minded, restricted, limited environments because they are not aware of the options and the choices that are available to them. That's what education does. They don't even think there are options in the they first place. They're like, if I, if I leave this guy, I'm done. Finish. This is the end. If this relationship falls apart, I'm done. I have no reason to live. Right. But success and education shows you the the variety. Of In the options. meantime, the relationship is very toxic. There, it's killing you. It's killing you. You are even. dying. Uh, yes. You are dying, but because. You have not empowered yourself, right. whether educationally, some people, and I'm proud to say, African women um, were not necessarily well educated back in the day in my grandmother's generation, right. but right. they were industrious. Right. They sold fruits, right. they sold chickens, right. they sold anything that could be sold, Absolutely. actually. They were real entrepreneurs. They were, they were entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I mean, what we've done now to is... To this day, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Even Today. To this day. So this whole entrepreneurship thing that we're saying almost like it's something is nothing new. We just didn't call it that. It's then. nothing. My grandmother was an entrepreneur. She was an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Because then what it does is that it opens the variety of options that are available. Right. You can be divorced. Yep. Don't think that it is the end. You can come to a situation where you might need to re-establish the the standard of your life for a season. Right. That's the other important principle that when we come to stages where we experience unexpected life events right. that put us at a disadvantage, don't be afraid to start again. You can rebase it. You can rebase it. Right. You can recalibrate. You might not drive the same car that you used to drive yep. before, yep. but if you can walk, baby girl, go Keep for going. it. Keep right. going. Keep right. going. If you still have legs to carry you, right. Walk to work, take a border border if right, you need to. Right, do what right, you need right, to do. Absolutely. And, and I think it begins by the appreciation of the fact that something has shifted. Exactly. But I'm going to have to keep on going. You're going to have to and keep on going. And therefore, I've got to rebase this. You've got I to I can rebase. sacrifice something for a season. It's true. As I then give myself the opportunity. And I think that's what makes the difference between people who progress right. and people who regress. Right. The people who progress are not afraid to recalibrate, to lose something for a season. Right. I can assure you, you will lose something for a season. We lost something for a season as a family. Right. There was a state where we were all together as the children and as the parents. Right. We lost that stability. Right. There was a, a, a time when there were, you know, two sources of income. Right. There was now one source of income when we lived with one of the parents. Right. We had certain friends at school and because we left and we went to different schools, we lost that kind of community element, the social the interaction. Social, right, right. But you know how the scriptures say, unless a seed falls and dies, right. it remains alone. Right. Just recognize, and I want to say this to mm. anyone watching, mm. that you feel you have come to a point where you are losing something. Mm. You feel like but no, I should just be getting and getting. Mm. The relationship didn't work. Mm. Because of COVID, the business had to close. Um, I needed to move my children to a different school that was much more affordable. I want to tell you, every time you feel like you are losing something, mm. it is God's way of giving you something. Right. It's God's way right. of getting something to you. Right. There's something you have to lose. Right. If, you are, if you are making an investment, they ask you to pay a deposit. Mm. Something must come out right. in order for something to go in. A seed so, must fall on the ground. I'm telling you. So right. don't feel like you are losing, you are regressing, it's falling apart. It's not. It is for a season and I'm a testimony to that. Right. We had a very difficult life, you know, after the, the divorce. Right. Uh, my mother struggled a lot. We went to schools that I would not have wanted my kids to go to. Correct. I don't think my mother wanted us to go to those right. schools. Right. But when I was at the University of London, I was like, look at me now. 
I was like, look at me now. That season didn't stop the next look season. Look at me now. There you I go. am here. Right. I might have gone to a primary school, a secondary school that was not the best, mm. but there are doors that will open for you mm. that will make you recognize that when you keep your mind on the prize, right. you keep your mind on the prize, Wrong. whether it's the neighborhood you want to stay in or not, the school you want to go to or not, keep your eye on the prize and eventually those doors are going to open. So you've got to take a long-term view. Have to. You have to. It's not just about the season it's you're presently quick, in. No. Because no. this season will eventually give way to Absolutely. another season. Absolutely. And therefore, long-term view. A very long term We will view. eventually. We will eventually get there. And I think I was having a conversation with someone around how we compromise. Right. And compromise is is... It costs you the potential future that God could have given you. So you find people who started right because they now have gone through a divorce. Because now the business has shut down, mm. they compromise. Mm. They say, maybe I can find another plan. Mm. Maybe the original um, is not going to work the way that I thought it would work. Mm. So even though I thought I could do this the clean way, and you are going to get people who will bribe you. You are going to get men who will tell you, hey, you are not going to make it. Mm. If I, I'll give you a car, I'll give you this. Right at that season when you are losing things, that's, that's mostly when you are going to be offered options for compromise. Because you're vulnerable. Because you are vulnerable. You're vulnerable. And what it is testing is your resolve and your character to do things the right way. Right. And the unfortunate thing about compromise is that once you allow someone to give you another option, you will always be indebted to them. They'll tell you one day, don't talk too much. Oh. You, you, know, know. you know. You know. You know. You know. You know. I, I... Do I release a card? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> don't get all Man. successful now right. and start thinking that, whoa, whoa, whoa. You owe hey, me, hey, Megan. Hey, you know hey, what? Hey. Yep. Don't talk too loud. Right, right. You know now in your season. So that guy suffering. determines at I'm what volume you, do you speak, when do you speak. The person who gave you an envelope under the table right. controls your life. So you're never free. You might move out of that season, right. but you will never move out of their control. Right. Because the higher you rise, the higher the stakes. And they tell you, if you start uh, rising too much, I put the information out there in the public. There are people who have been silenced as a result of the compromises that they made in their seasons of suffering. Mm. And I think that for me, you know, watching my mother suffer, watching my mother moving from house to house, we didn't have a car, we stayed here, we stayed there, we didn't study in the, in the, in the, in the best schools. But if you look at my mother now, I say there is no reason for me to give control of my life to anyone. Right. My mother did it. She right. didn't, nobody, nobody. Right. It was right. only God. And therefore, it gives you the confidence to be able to say, thank you very much. Keep your envelope. I have been raised by women and by men mm. who did things the right way mm. and they were able to get to where God wanted to do. And it to gives get legitimacy them. to the outcomes Absolutely. eventually that we get to see today. Absolutely. And you feel proud. You feel proud. Nobody, you know, did anything for you. In fact, I was speaking somewhere and I was saying that there's nothing as liberating as, as knowing that nobody did me a favor. Right. I want the person who said they did me a favor to come out from where? Right. Where? From where? Right. What right. were those sleepless nights I was spending doing three master's de degrees for? Mm. It was so that there could be legitimacy and authenticity to my success. Mm. Nobody gave me a certificate. Right. No way. Right. Nobody handed me an envelope anywhere. And therefore, you are able to speak with authority and with boldness because they ain't nothing to hide. Right, right. Nothing but you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to look back and say, we did it then. I actually mm. want to extract a piece of you walking through those yes. days then. Yes. Because when there's someone watching you right now and they're saying, yeah. man, that's exactly where I'm at. Yeah. How old were you when this divorce happened? I was, well, we moved out of um, our parents' home possibly like as an early teen, 12 years old, there are formative stages. Very, very formative stages. I think at the very time when you really need family stability. Right. And I think one of the most difficult things is that because as children, we learn through imitation. If I don't have people that I'm watching and I'm imitating, 
I am so vulnerable to everything that I am watching. Right, right. And therefore, there's a loss of identity that will automatically come into the picture. Mm. So I spent most of my teenage years actually wondering what, what, was, why, what was I alive for, mm. you know? Mm. Like, who was I meant to be? What path or what direction was I meant to go into? So if I encountered friends who were going one direction, friends who were drinking, friends who were smoking, I smoked, by the way, even if it was two cigarettes, but I smoked nonetheless. At least you took that box. <laughs> <laughs> At some stage, you know, you are smoking yep. or you are drinking something funny, funny. Right, right. Because, you know, anybody who says, no, this is the way to happiness. We huh? follow the wind. Oh, we smoke, we become happy. You are right. there, smoke. We drink, we become happy. That is what you do. And so I think that the loss of family stability primarily destroys your ability to find direction. Right. Because right. you are meant to be guided by right. these individuals right. who have walked before you, right. who are better equipped. And who know, you look up to. Whom you look up to and right. they show you what is possible. Right. And so, they have the ultimate responsibility really absolutely. of nurturing you. Absolutely. Right. So I fell prey into that, mm. especially in my uh, in my, um, you know, secondary school years, right. where in high school, actually, where I found I could actually see that there is a part of my character that is very much shaped by the, the direction in which the people who are closest to me are going. I'm not discerning in terms of whether that direction is the direction I right. should be going right. to. Right. And in fact, you know, that's the reason why I wrote my book, mm -hmm. Pushing Back the Darkness. Right. Right. It was essentially saying, Every stream has got to find its own direction. Right. You have got right. to find your own path and you need to refuse to accept the unacceptable. Mm. Once you have wallowed in the space I was in as a teenager, mm. where you lost direction, mm. a sense of purpose and identity. Mm. Once you find that purpose, right. once you find that identity, right. ah, there is no lottery, what, what, nothing that will move you or shake you because you know how it is to be purposeless and directionless mm. and i think in in expressing myself in the book in pushing back the darkness mm. i am advancing the idea of how to go against the grain right how to come to a place where you are comfortable to say i don't take that nonsense right where you are comfortable to say you don't pay me like that right even and with a straight hey, face. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> because now we have suffered so much, you take whatever they give. You're like, oh, now, you know, whatever little they provide. I don't know when the next one is going to come. So let me just take whatever comes through. I'm telling right, you. Right. So we've got to be equipped on how to come to a place where, with great respect, right. you are able to say, this does not match the level of my experience and qualifications. In fact, quite recently, I turned down an offer right. because I recognize that the investment that I have made and all the other people mm. in my life have made into mm. me, mm. it's disrespectful to take that offer right? because right. it does not recognize the investment that has been made in mm -hmm. me. So most people feel like it's difficult for them to set boundaries, to say no, mm. because they are afraid of they're going to be rude. Mm. You're, you're actually not being rude. You're mm. doing a service mm. to the investment that has been made in you. It's like if you were selling a house now, it is 10 million Kenyan shillings. Right. Somebody say, I give you 500k. Sounds like an insult on the face. What is that? Man. I mean, take a walk. What is that? Right. There's right. No, I, I don't even answer you. Right. I just keep walking. Right. There's no conversation right. to have. You're not worth my attention. You understand? <laughs> you mean me. I must right. do all that work right. in that house. Right. Then I must take any offer. Yep. That's what it is. Pushing back the darkness is about understanding the level of investment that has been made into you. Mm. Because when you invest in something, it appreciates in value, in value right. and therefore any offer that is made whether it is someone who wants to marry you whether it is you know a job they want to give you any offer that is made must match the investment done. the level of investment right, right. and the value that has appreciated right. otherwise it's an insult and, and you know for you sounds like it all started when you started discovering your own purpose yes it did in the midst of lost identity crisis yes, and did. all of that stuff and and i'm just curious yeah what what helped you eventually yes. find your own purpose and yeah. what what are these things that then drove you eventually to the point where you can say yeah i think i've started to discover me yeah and the value of me and the worth you know dennis if i can be very transparent with you i think 
those of us who have gone to the bottom, there's something in you that must go to the very bottom. Mm. Some people tolerate mediocrity because you really haven't suffered enough yet, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that, man. <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> you haven't suffered <laughs> enough. I'm you, telling you. You didn't say that. I'm telling you. Those, you needed to have suffered a bit more. Listen. Right. Those of us who have gone to rock bottom. Right. There was a, and I talk about this in some of my talks, you know, to the women and to the ladies. Not only not tell the country, so I think you said. <laughs> so I right. say, right. I say to, to the ladies that I speak to, because right. I speak to women and so on, I say to them, there was a guy who dumped me. Yep. Hey, oh. Oh. my brother. Tell us about this, my woman. brother. Tell us. My brother. Yep. I've Tell been me. married for 19 years, right. but I was damned. I was damned. It was. Oh. Such, oh man. It was such a struggle within myself that I felt such a deep sense of rejection from a relationship that I felt I had invested in. Right. And what it 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 kind of generated in me was this holy anger my brother Whoa. like from here on ain't nobody gonna dump me no more no way ain't happening again i man. am done i am so working on myself i am so removing my sense of um my sense of happiness and joy from from someone else right. or from a or from what a relationship can give me right i, I recognize that there was something i needed to build into me it's going to be so an inside job. I've got to be self-sufficient. Right. It's going to be the kind of joy. It's going to be the kind of success that is not by association. You know how we do, and maybe I'm guilty of it as well. Right. If you meet someone who's very successful, you're going to try and take a picture with them. Mm -hmm. The reason you're going to take a picture with them because you understand that there's something called influence by association. Right. So right. you as an entity, you might not have your own influence. Mm. But if we know that Dennis rolls, man, he rolls with the big guys. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be associated. <laughs> if we know that you roll with the big guys, right, right. Dennis might be a zero. Yep. No offense, Dennis yeah, is not a zero. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that person might not have any value of their own, but they derive their value from, their from the people that they're associated with. And there's a big problem with that topic for another day. Right, right. But I think what that experience did to me and how low I felt, the sense of rejection I felt, it was a signal to me mm. that my sense of content is not coming from within. Because if I was content from within, why was it so devastating? Right. If I could manage within myself, why was it such a blow? It meant that whatever sense of stability, whatever sense of joy, whatever sense of contentment I got was very much linked to who I was in relationship It was with. external. It was very much external. And that revealed to me that there's an inside job that needs to happen within me. And I think that's what my Christian faith and my salvation did for me. My God. I mean, I know people have got their own philosophies and theories about salvation and about faith, especially in an unseen God at this day and age. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't care less what anyone thinks because I know what salvation did in me. Wow! No, 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 even, even before you, I go to salvation, man. I'm so, handling failure. Yeah. Yeah. Handling failure. Yeah. Yeah. What we do with yeah. it when it comes. Yeah. So there, there are breakups that become devastating enough. Mm. Life almost stops. Mm. And mm. I can't move on beyond. In mm. fact, it becomes stigma mm. and becomes every vice that mm. you can think about. I can't go past that conversation. Yeah. Without talking about the fact that then for you. Yeah. It became an inflection point. Yes. It became an assignment to work better on me. Yes. And I, I recently talked about something that then, uh, don't get bitter, yeah. get better. Amen. I mean, I, I can decide with the, the tailwind that comes. Yeah. Do I, what do I do? Yeah. It, it has a potential to make me either bitter. Yeah. Or I can take it, yeah. work on me, yeah. and become better. Absolutely. You know, I think one of the things that we've got to be very careful about, especially as Christians, is to be careful about being under pressure to show that everything is working. Mm. 